Two Sides of a Coin, Dharma Talks by Sayadaw Uakata. And A Noble Search Dharma Talks by Sayadaw U. Kandima, Sandima. A Postscript of Dharma Talks by Sayadaw U. Akata and Sayadaw U. Kandima, Sandima. In Thi In Gu Sayadaw's teachings, I don't include his meditation instruction to yogis. So here I want to describe in gist from his many talks. We also will know why Yu Kandima had difficulty in his own practice by following it. At the time when he was following the system had no knowledge about anything on Dharma. Thi In Gu Sayadaw's practice is not much different from Sun Lun Sayadaw's practice because he used the book about him and the practice. One time a very senior and well-known Tang Ta Sayadogi requested Sun Lun Sayadaw to write the practice of Anapanasati for him in gist was as follows. Even though Tana could be cut off from the Idor etc. By watching, but with touching, knowing and sati by watching at the body door to cut off Tana is easy to develop the strong view of mind-body knowledge, Nama Rupa Nana. At the body door contact, Fasa, arises, conditioned by contact and feeling arises, Vedana, from feeling not let it become craving, Tana, clinging, Upadana, and becoming, Bhava, by cutting it off with mindfulness, Sati, i.e., at feeling. If cut off Tana in this way Vedana not become Vedana Sana instead it becomes Vedana Pana. This part of the instruction was in the letter. Soon Lun Sayadaw wrote it from the beginning of Anapanasati up to path and fruition mind states. Thi Ingu Sayadaw did not have much education and knowledge. So his style of teaching is very simple and like a fixed formula. His voice and language had strength and energy, very direct and blunt. In the case of Anapanasati, for example, the mind must know the pressure of the incoming and outgoing air. Breathe naturally and following the nature of knowing. Near death, the four elements will kill you. There are forty Samatha objects. There are physical form, Aramana Kamathana, loathsomeness, Asubha Kamathana, form, Rupa Kamathana, mind Kamathana. Just know the in and out pressure, air. Don't think anything. After a period of sitting contact with a hard floor, Fasa right pointing arrow, Vedana arises. Mind and body of people are not the same, in the same way, their dharmas are different. From mind kamathana, form kamathana and aramana kamathana can become sotapana. In your past life, if you had practiced aramana kamathana before, physical objects will arise, in the mind, such as red color, yellow color, forest and mountain, etc. These are arising by changing. Only if you can give the correct concept, panati, can you discern the paramatta. So you must give the right concept. How to contemplate it? Contemplate form, rupa, as changing nature. Don't give the concepts of red, green, yellow, etc. If you do it and connect to Vedana, contemplate the nature of form as changing and dissolution. You can see each one of them is changing, i.e., not changing into something, each one arises and disappears. Don't know them as, green, yellow, blue, etc. In the past, if you had practiced an asubha object, a subha nimitta will arise. The acquired sign, parikama nimitta, arises in the mind. Nimitta will arise. The acquired sign, parikama nimitta, arises in the mind. If you practiced skeleton before, now skeleton will arise. Sayadaw also talked about other asubha nimittas. Don't be afraid of it. These are your dharma inheritance of the past. Some people talked about them as concepts. They didn't know the differences between concept and reality, paramatta. These are the results of past kamas. If seeing asubha in this life, you will go to nibbana, i.e., can finish the practice like him. It kills Tana directly. Don't let it disappear. Contemplate its nature. How does it appear? For example, the flesh body changes slowly stage by stage, 
becoming brown and black in color, flowing out with putrid blood and pus, the body becomes bloated, etc. Observe its nature. How does it change and dissolve? You will see its nature. Seeing, hearing, smelling, etc. Are Dharma. You don't need to argue about it. Don't be afraid of the putrid, bloated corpses which are Upadanakunda of the mind. You'll see the whole world as a subha, as in his own practice. With Nama, mind, Kamathana from the internal, the affliction of the four elements arise. The elements nature of earth, water, heat, air arise. If the earth element arises first, it'll kill you, i.e., at death. When the earth element arises, the mind knows it as stiffness, i.e., concept. You have to change it as affliction of form, rupa, and feeling, vedana. Don't know its nature of stiffness. Contemplate it as afflicted form and feeling, again feeling is nama, mind. And then know the nature of nama. What is the task of nama? Nama nature is that it feels, experience, and dissolves. Don't take it as stiffness and tenseness. If you make it, Vedana connects Tana. You will be not free from apaya, woeful existences, if you take it as painful. Instead you have to know it as afflicted form and feeling. This is knowing the mind and form. Feeling is mind, nama, dharma. What is the natural characteristic of nama? Its nature is feeling and dissolution. In this way, know all the bodily sensation as the feeling of the mind, which feels and dissolves. All these continuous knowing of them come to the end, i.e., following the ending of feelings. This is Nama Kamathana you have to put effort in one sitting to free from Apaya. You contemplate with the five powers, Bala, of faith, effort, mindfulness, concentration and wisdom, Sada, Varya, Sati, Samadhi and Panna. You must know these minds. 1. Mind with faith. I'll do what the teacher asks me, even if my bones and skin are worn out. If I die, then let me die. If I don't die, then let me attain Dharma. I'll not get up from sitting. In this way we'll realize the four truths. You'll not attain it if you are groaning with pain and stop it. I am asking you for temporary dying exercise. You have to practice it to become habitual. This is practicing for dying. If not a hundred thousand humans die, no one becomes human again. Why is that? Because you'll designate it as I, i.e., self. If someone dies by wriggling his body on bed, he will not become human again because of dying with the wrong view. 2. Mind with effort. From the beginning of the world this mind goes out external and feels the objects, mostly to experience pleasant feelings. You have to put in the effort and not let the mind go out. This is mind effort. The Buddha only taught about the mind. 3. Mind with sati. You must always keep sati in mind. If stiffness arises, don't know it as stiffness. Know it as the afflicted form, rupa, with vedana. Vedana is nama dharma. Because I am worried that you will know them as stiffness, tenseness, etc. Sati supports the mind so that it does not become an unwholesome mind, akasala chitta, but a wholesome mind, kasala chitta. 4. Samadhi mind. The mind does not change and only knows one. 5. Panna mind. Mind, nama, nature is feeling and dissolution and knowing this is wisdom or knowledge mind. Vipassana yogis are free from apayas by knowing the mind in this way, if not far from it. The Buddha also had done this work. You can become a child of Buddha by doing only this work. The truths of seeing the mind, seeing form and seeing objects, aramanas, these are seeing the truths by stages. These also called the truths of Sotapanna, Sakadagami, Anagami and Arahant respectively, i.e., stream enter on mind, once and non-returner on form, Arahant on aramanas. If you try hard, and you must do it for a dependency, you will surely reach it. Breathe strongly if it is painful. If you treat it as painful, 
the mind will not want to feel it. With anger or aversion, you'll go to hell. Don't stop it. With one sitting, let Vedana cease. Don't give a perception, sana, to it, otherwise Sankara will condition it. If Vedana becomes strong, not allowing these states of mind to arise, you have to breathe strongly, i.e. Anapana. Balance Samadhi and Pana. Here or anywhere of his talks, Sayadaw did not mention how to do it. He only recited a short verse which belonged to Thatham Mingun Sayadaw. From this verse, later Yu Kandima taught, Samadhi like the scales. According to the Buddha, the result stopped by killing the cause. Pain, aches, etc. are the result Dharma and concept Dharmas. Have to know them as Vedana Nama Dharma and this kills the cause. If it is treated as pain, aches, etc., it will kill the results. The cause will follow by killing its result. The hotness, aches, etc., will stop by killing the cause. Near death with pain and aches, one will rely on the doctors. Tell people this is exercising for dying, i.e., dealing with pains. You'll die later. When dying, you'll know how to die. There are the minds to Apaya, to celestial realms and to Nibbana. You have to know about these minds. You have to practice knowing them with knowledge, wisdom, vijapana. Furthermore, you can't overcome it with sana. If it's painful, then you'll be finished, and become afraid. Don't know like this. When the four great elements are afflicted, vedanas arise. Vedana is nama, mind, dharma. What is the nature of nama dharma? It feels and dissolves. How to follow Vedana? Tension is feeling, aching is feeling, etc. In this way, know the nature of Nama. The Buddha asked to follow the ending of form and mind natures. Don't let them be your nature, i.e., by noting as, tense, stiff, hot, cold, etc. If Vedana becomes strong, breathe strongly. Level Samadhi and Panna will see impermanence. Here leveling or tuning samadhi and panna is tuning the five spiritual faculties, indriyas. There is no mention in the scriptures or other teachers of how to tune it in detail. Yukandima's scales like meditation is not an easy one but simple. You'll find out the nature of mind, nama, which feels sukha and dukkha. The mind fears dukkha and likes, love, sukha. When Dukkha Vedana arises, it knows of the legs, in sitting, and not able to bear the pain it moves to the tip of the nostril. Knowing these, Dukkha and Sukkha, to and fro is knowing impermanence, this is not the same as Yukandima's scales like meditation, see above the instruction of Yukandima. If you follow them to the end, mind and form cease at the same time. The mind becomes peaceful and happy. This arrives at Sitanupasana Satipatthana, from Dukkha into Sukha, i.e., into Sotapana. Knowing the tip of the nostril is Kyapasana, i.e., breath meditation. Knowing feeling, Vedana, arising is Vedana Satipatthana, and then the feeling nature of Nama Dharma ends, arriving at Sitasatipatthana, from where one continues to be a once returner, non returner, and Arahant. See Sayadaw's practice and realization. Stiffness, tension, etc., are non existent dharmas. Nama feeling is an existing dharma. When you arrive Sitasati Pathana, your destination, good existence, Sugati, is stable. You have to practice becoming stable destinations, Gati. Work hard. Be patient with Vedana and attack Kalesa. If you have patience, i.e., Kanti, will attain Nibbana. What has to be patient? Following the Vedana which arises from the afflicted Kanda with patience, from the beginning, middle till to the end. You must work with it, it'll become Vijanana. If you know or take it as pains and aches will become more painful and aching. Pain and aches are not existing knowledge. This is what everyone knows, even animals. Feeling of Vedana is the existing knowledge. How to know it to be free from everyone's knowledge? 
Vedana is mind. Nama, Dharma. You have to know the mind. If you don't understand the mind, and instead see it as pain and aches, then it is in trouble. Have to go down to a pyre, keep this in mind, especially at dying. You only have to know its one nature as feeling and dissolution. And it will become skilled, like in jhana. If you know Vedana feels and dissolves near death, you will go to Sugati heaven, as the Buddha had mentioned. If taking it as pain and aches, you'll become dogs, pigs, chickens and fishes in the water. You all are eating a lot of pigs, chickens, etc. Therefore if you die, you will become ducks, pigs and chicken and repay your debts with the candors. Contemplate Vedana to free from me and mine, not let Vedana connect Tana. Vedana is the mind which nature feels and dissolves. Hotness, coldness, stiffness do not exist, without clinging Dharma free from the Kamas, actions, of going to the four Apayas. I am correcting your thoughts. Form, Rupa, nature is afflicted by its own. Mind nature is feeling on its own. Where are the pains and aches coming from? Only mind and form exist. You don't do the habitual practice, Bhavatabha. In the beginning affliction and feeling it, that is knowing with sana, i.e., right and existing perception. This is asking you to contemplate to become samadhi and panna. At Sayadaw mentioned above, humans have to pay their evil debts with candors. This is not an exaggeration. Nowadays humans consume or to be consumed a lot of different kinds of animal flesh, where these came from, from animal farms and very few were from forests, rivers and seas. Humans cannot expect to be born in forests, because most of the forests were extinct. Mogik Sayadaw also reminded the yogis to practice hard if not had to pay their debts with candors as flesh for foods, as pigs, fowls etc. Or toiled for humans as horses, oxen, etc. You were watching outdoor shows for the whole night. There are many kinds of outdoor shows in Burma. Some relate to religious festivals, some for entertainment. Usually it starts from 7 p.m. to until dawn. But when for practice, most Buddhists can't give or use their time or sitting for a short period. Here, Sayadaw referred to practice. If you sit in meditation, you will go to heaven after death. Sitting in recreation will lead to a pyre. Among 100,000 people, if one knows only pain and suffering, no one becomes a human being again after death, or is not born in a good destination, Sugati. It becomes unbearable at the time of death and will enter a pyre. During going and coming, i.e., in daily life, you have to know feeling, experiencing, Vedana and its dissolution, i.e., the same as Sun Lun Sayadaw's way of practice. Sitting meditation is changing Apaya destinations with heavenly realms. Pains and aches are Upadanam Dharma which are unbearable minds. These are Lobha, Dosa, Moha minds. Knowing of feeling and dissolution is right view, Sama Dithi. Knowing of pains and aches is wrong view, Micha Dithi. All these are wholesome minds and unwholesome minds. Only these two mind states exist. Kasala Cheetahs and Akasala Cheetah, Sugati minds and Apaya minds. You have to practice for a fixed destination, Gati, and become skilled. Regarding shows and entertainments, I heard a story from a Burmese. There was a well-known traditional Burmese dancer. He worked for his professional career until old age. One of his sons was a famous movie actor. When the dancer died, a village woman had a dream. The dream was the dancer after death taking rebirth at her place in the womb of a she-pig. This news spread widely and became well known. Later the dancer's son bought this piglet and looked after it very well. There is a sutta in Samyutta Nikaya in parallel with this case. It is called Talaputta Discourse. Salayatanavaga. SN.42.2, actor Talaputta asked the Buddha where an actor would take rebirth after death. The Buddha's answer was, hell or animals. The audiences are also not good either. 
nowadays movies, video games, etc. are more and more erotic and violence. So their minds are more and more polluted with lust, anger and delusion. I have no idea how successful Thi Ingu Sayadaw's teaching has been for yogis. Sayadaw Yu Kandima's teaching seems quite successful. From their autobiographies and practices, we can say that they had paramis. The most important point is the quality of their minds. Both of them are tough, resolute, have a lot of patience and endurance with strong faiths and true noble warriors. Parami is coming from practice. So a Buddhist's duty is to study and practice Dharma. A noble search does only exist in the Buddha Dharma. So it is a very difficult and rare chance to encounter. Therefore, the Buddha Dharma represents wholesome and noble education. Other secular knowledge and religions have only wholesome education that they can teach to human beings. This much is even very rare. Only the sages and the wise can do it. Most human beings only end up with ignoble educations and searches. Nowadays, human situations are more and more inclined towards this direction. From societies to internationals, many problems, dangers and disasters arise from this kind of education and search. Humans are more and more greedy and selfish. It seems to me, only two types of people make this beautiful earth become an unpleasant place. Immoral politicians, some world leaders, and very greedy wealthy people, i.e., misuse of power and wealth. The most stupid and foolish thing is arms industries and businesses. If you don't use it for killing and murdering people, what is the use of it? USA is a good example. If arms industries and arms businesses develop and flourish, there will be no peace and human well-being in the world. These power mongers and wealth mongers always look for excuses to create wars and instability around the world. In the Dharmapada, XXIV, Craving, Tana. Verse 355. Riches, powers, ruin the man. Weak in discernment. But not those who seek. The beyond. Noble search. Through craving for riches, powers. The man weak in discernment. Ruins himself. As he would others. All kinds of pollution and violence occurring in the world today testify to the Buddha's wisdom and insight. There was a wise message or remark made by Ven. Nyaneshaloka Mahatera, a pioneer German monk, in his address in 1956 at the Sixth Buddhist Council. For the Buddha's doctrine forms the only safe and firm road that will keep mankind away from those crude materialistic notions which are the root causes of all selfishness, greed, hate and therefore of war and cruelty, and of all misery in the world. I will end this noble search with the following story on Tanna, craving and clinging. In Sayadaw U. Kandima's talk on living, dying and future, he told the story of a woman. She was rich and kept a lot of gold in a safe. Sometimes she was thinking of making merits with it, but because of stinginess and cannot let it go. Unexpectedly one day she died and left everything behind. After she died, the children wanted to divide the wealth among them. What did they find out when they opened the safe? They found out a big Mayao, Burmese, clung to the golds. I don't know it in English. It's similar between a leech and a slug without eyes and mouth with a grey colour body, amidst liquid like mucus. Yu Kandima said that this animal was spontaneous birth, Opapatika. In Buddhist texts, spontaneous births are only associated with Sampitas, heavenly beings and hell beings only, and never mentioned animals. There is a parallel story in the Dharmapada, Impurities, Mala Vaga, DHP. 240. The story of monk Tissa, who died with attachment to his new robes, and was born as a louse in the robe. This is a very quick rebirth that can be counted as spontaneous. A Western teacher said, people who don't realize the harm they can do to themselves and to other people are really dangerous. That is true, and it can be related to all worldlings who are full of kalesas. 
With strong desire and anger, one can do all possible evil things to oneself and others without knowing the consequences. The education on the law of Kama becomes very important to every human being whatever their color of skin, nationality, culture and religions. Because it is a universal teaching. Everyone understands Kama rightly and seriously about it, they will have shame and fear of wrongdoings. These two qualities are the guardian dharmas of the world. Even if we cannot follow the Buddha's dharma and become a noble person, we should at least become a decent person. It's not only to create peace, harmony and well-being in this life, but also the future life to come.